Hello students, let's start today with ionization constants of weak acids. So let's consider a weak acid HX that is partially ionized in the aqueous solution. The equilibrium can be expressed by HX plus H2O gives H3O plus plus X minus. Now suppose the initial concentration of HX is C moles per liter, H3O plus and X minus is not formed. They are zero moles per liter. Let alpha be the extent of ionization, then change is e in HX is equal to minus C alpha and H3O plus formed as well as X minus is equal to C alpha. Equilibrium concentration of HX will be equal to C minus C alpha and equilibrium concentration of H3O plus and X minus will be equal to C alpha. C is your initial concentration of the undissociated acid HX at T0. Alpha is the extent up to which HX is ionized into ions. We can derive the equilibrium constant for the above discussed acid dissociation equilibrium that is Ka equals to C square alpha square divided by C into 1 minus alpha or it is equal to C alpha square upon 1 minus alpha where Ka is called the dissociation or ionization constant of acid HX. It can also be represented, represented alternatively in terms of molar concentration as follows. Ka equals to H molar concentration of H plus into molar concentration of X minus upon molar concentration of HX. At a given temperature T, Ka is a measure of the strength of the acid HX. Larger the value of Ka, the stronger is the acid. So Ka is a dimensional less quantity with understanding that the standard state concentration of all the species is one molar. Then the relation, one more relation, pKa equals to minus log Ka. So with the help of pKa, we can determine the acidic strength of the acid that is provided to you. Remember in your mind, smaller the value of pKa, or larger the value of Ka, more acidic is the compound species that is provided to you. So keep in mind, pKa should be small to decide the acidic strength and larger the value of Ka, more acidic will be the acid compound that is provided to you. A general stepwise approach can be adopted to evaluate the pH of the weak electrolyte as follows. The species present before dissociation are identified as bronsted lowry acids or bases. Then balanced equations for all possible reactions, that is, with the species acting both as acid as well as base are written. The reaction with the higher Ka Ka is identified as the primary reaction, whilst the other is a subsidiary reaction. So firstly, you need to determine, identify the principal reaction, primary reaction there. Enlist in a tabular form the following values for each of the species in the primary reaction. Initial concentration, that is C, change in concentration and proceeding to equilibrium in terms of alpha, that is degree of ionization. And third is equilibrium concentration. Then substitute equilibrium concentrations into equilibrium constant equation for principal reaction and solve the value of alpha. Calculate the concentration of species in principal reaction. And the last step is calculate pH by putting the formula pH equals to minus log H plus ion concentration. And the above mentioned methodology has been elucidated in the examples given below. Look at this problem 7.18. The question is the ionization constant of HF is 3.2 into 10 raised to minus 4. Calculate the degree of uh, dissociation of HF in its 0.02 molar solution. 
also you need to calculate the concentration of all the species present that is h3o plus f minus and hf in the solution there so here you see ionization constant that is ka value for hf is given as 3.2 into 10 raised to minus 4 there are two reactions which are taking place here first is hf reacting with h2o hf plus h2o reversible reaction gives h3o plus plus f minus and ka for this is 3.2 into 10 raised to minus 4 also since it is in solution phase h2o plus h2o that reaction also takes place gives h3o plus plus oh minus and kw for this reaction is 1 into 10 raised to minus 14 since the value of ka is greater in comparison to that of kw so the principal reaction is the first reaction which i told the first reaction was hf plus H2O reversible reaction gives H3O plus plus F minus. So we'll proceed with this equation. So initial concentration of HF is given here as 0 0.02 molar and H3O plus and F minus 0 moles per liter initially. Now suppose here 0 0.02 alpha moles get dissociated, the remaining HF at equilibrium will be equal to 0 0.02 minus 0 0.02 alpha of HF remains undissociated and H3O plus as well as F minus formed will be 0 0.02 alpha. Now, by putting in the equilibrium constant reaction that is Ka equals to molar concentration of H3O plus into F minus upon HF. When you put the values, you can calculate the value of alpha there. And there are two values of alpha which you get. One is plus 0.12 and the other one is minus 0.12, the values. The, you get actually a quadratic equation and by putting the solution of the quadratic equation, you will get two values of alpha plus minus 0.12 respectively. The minus one is neglected and we consider the plus sign there. So alpha is here equal to plus 0.12. So the concentration of H3O plus is equal to F minus, we considered there as C alpha. So concentration is given here as 0 0.02 molar into 0 0.12 alpha value. We get it as 0 0.12. So you can calculate the concentration of H3O plus and F minus there. Similarly, you can also calculate the concentration of HF. HF you considered there as the value C into 1 minus alpha. That is 0 0.02 into 1 minus alpha value is 0.12. So you can calculate the concentrations of H3O plus, F minus and HF in the solution. Then if you need to calculate the value of pH, you can calculate by putting in the formula pH is equal to minus log of H plus ion concentration. So you get the value of H3O plus, put the value of, in this chapter, we are using H plus and H3O plus as the same so H3O plus value you had calculated, put the value in this pH equation and calculate the pH of the solution. So pH comes out to be a 2.52 respectively. This is how you will solve this problem 7.18. Next I come to ionization of weak bases. In ionization of weak bases, the ionization of base MOH is represented by the equation MOH gives M plus plus OH minus. And here we'll calculate the base dissociation constant, base ionization constant or dissociation constant. And it's represented by KB. So KB is equal to M plus into OH minus upon MOH. If C is the initial concentration of base and alpha is the degree of ionization of base, that is the extent to which the base ionizes. Kb is equal to C alpha square divided by C into 1 minus alpha. So this is the formula that is used for calculation of base ionization constant. Look at the equation NH3 on treatment with water 
reversible reaction NH4 plus plus OH minus is formed. And the pH scale for hydrogen ion concentration has been extended to get the value of pKb is equal to minus log of Kb. Here also the concept is smaller the value of pKb or larger the value of Kb, more basic will be the species that is provided to you, will be the compound that is provided to you. I repeat, smaller the value of pKb or larger the value of Kb, greater will be the basic strength of the compound that is provided to you. Let's see the numerical here problem. The pH of 0 0.004 molar hydrazine solution is 9.7. Calculate its ionization constant Kb and pKb. So hydrazine formula is NH2, NH2. So NH2, NH2 on treatment with water gives NH2, NH3 plus plus OH minus. This is a base. Hydrazine actually is a base. So pH of uh, this hydrazine solution is given to you as 9.7. So from this, you can calculate the H plus ion concentration. And the H plus ion concentration of this solution comes out to be 1.995 into 10 raised to minus 10. On putting the formula, pH is equal to minus log H plus. You need to calculate here first log H plus and then H plus, which is equal to anti log of that particular number. So your answer H plus comes out to be 1.995 into 10 raised to minus 10. Then you need to calculate OH minus ion concentration. So OH minus ion is equal to 10 raised to minus 14 divided by H plus ion concentration. So you get the value of that OH minus here as 5.012 into 10 raised to minus 5. So you can calculate Kb from the reaction. Kb is equal to molar concentration of NH2, NH3 plus into molar concentration of OH minus upon molar concentration of NH2, NH2. So here, just now I calculated the value of OH minus. It comes out to be 5.012 into 10 raised to minus 5 square divided by uh, your point zero zero four point zero zero four and you get the answer there as eight point nine six into ten raised to minus seven that is the value of kb pkb you can calculate pkb is equal to minus log kb so you can calculate the value of pkb and it comes out to be six point zero four just try and see whether you're getting the answer or not. Look at this problem. The question is calculate the pH of the solution in which mixing 0.2 molar NH4Cl and 0.1 molar NH3 are present and the pKb of ammonia solution is 4.75 respectively. So from this pKb value, I can calculate the value of Kb first. So you calculate the value of Kb, it comes out to be 1.77 into 10 raised to minus five molar. Then you put in the equation NH3 plus H2O gives NH4 plus plus OH minus. Calculate the value of OH minus first. And then OH minus here comes out to be 0.88 into 10 raised to minus 5 respectively. Then calculate the value of H plus. H plus you can calculate by putting in the formula H plus is equal to KW upon OH minus. KW value is 1 into 10 raised to minus 14. And OH minus just now I calculated it is 0 0.88 into 10 raised to minus 5. So you get the H plus ion concentration here as 1.14 into 10 raised to minus 9. Then you can calculate the value of pH by putting the formula pH is equal to minus log of H plus. You got the value of H plus, put the value of H plus there and calculate the pH. The pH comes out to be 8.95 respectively. Please try this problem also and you can solve it. 
then let's look at the relationship between ka and kb just now i mentioned ka is the dissociation constant of an acid and kb is the dissociation constant of the base respectively in case of a conjugate acid base pair they are related in a very simple manner so that if one is known the other can be deduced let's consider the simple example of nh4 plus and nh3 so you see here nh4 plus plus h2o gives nh3 plus h3o plus ka equals to h3o plus molar concentration into molar concentration of nh3 upon molar concentration of nh4 plus whose value comes out to be 5.6 into 10 raised to minus 10 then the second equation nh3 plus h2o gives nh4 plus plus oh minus kb is equal to nh4 plus molar concentration into oh minus molar concentration upon an a molar concentration of nh3 and its value comes out to be 1.8 into 10 raised to minus 5 the net reaction if you see 2h2o gives h3o plus plus oh minus and kw here comes out to be 1 into 10 raised to minus 14 molar now it can be seen from the net reaction that the equilibrium constant is equal to the product of equilibrium constants ka and kb that is ka into kb is equal to kw and its value comes out to be 1 into 10 raised to minus 14 molar when you put all the values and substitute you get the product of ka and kb is equal to kw and its value comes out to be 1 into 10 raised to minus 14 molar so the equilibrium constant for a net reaction obtained after adding two or more reactions equals the product of the equilibrium constants for individual reactions that is k net equals to k1 into k2 or Ka into Kb will be equal to Kw in case of a conjugate acid base pair there. So knowing one, the other can be obtained and it should be noted that a strong acid will have a weak conjugate base and vice versa. So you can see the base dissociation equilibrium reaction B plus H2O gives BH plus plus OH minus and Kb is equal to BH plus into OH minus upon B. Similarly, you can calculate the Kb value and Kb is equal to Kw divided by Ka or Ka into Kb is equal to Kw. Also, it may be noted that if we take negative logarithm of both sides of the equation, then Pk values of conjugate acid and base are related to each other by the equation Pka plus Pkb is equal to pkw which is equal to 14 at 298 kelvin respectively let's now come to di and polyacidic polybasic acids and di and polyacidic bases we know some of the acids like oxalic acid sulfuric acid phosphoric acids have more than one ionizable proton per molecule of the acid and that's why such acids are known as polybasic or polyprotic acids. The ionization reactions, for example, for a dibasic acid H2X is represented by the equation you can see in which is shown H2X gives H plus plus HX minus. HX minus gives H plus plus X2 minus. Corresponding equilibrium constants are Ka1 equals to H plus molar concentration into HX molar concent minus molar concentration upon H2X and Ka2 is equal to HX molar concentration into X2 minus molar concentration upon HX minus. Ka1 and Ka2 are first and second ionization constants respectively of the acid H2X. Similarly, if you take the case of tri-basic acids H3PO4, we have ionization constants. So you can see the values of ionization constants, Ka1, Ka2, Ka3 at 298 Kelvin. You can see from the table that higher order ionization constants, Ka2, Ka3 are smaller than the lower order ionization constant, Ka1 of a polyprotic acid. 
The reason for this is it is more difficult to remove a positively charged proton from a negative ion due to electrostatic forces. And this can be seen in case of removing a proton from the uncharged H2CO3 as compared from a negatively charged HCO3 minus. Similarly, it is more difficult to remove a proton from a doubly charged HPO4 2 minus anion as compared to H2PO4 minus. Polyprotic acid solutions contain a mixture of acids like H2A, HA minus and A2 minus in case of diprotic acid. H2A being a strong acid, the primary reaction involves the dissociation of H2A and H3O plus in the solution and comes mainly from the first dissociation step. Let's come to the factors affecting acid strength. So the extent of dissociation of an acid usually depends upon two things. First is on the strength and second is on the polarity of the HA bond. So two things we'll see, one the strength and the other on the polarity of the HA bond. It should be noted that while comparing elements in the same group of the periodic table, HA bond strength is a more important factor in determining acidity than its polar nature. So as the size of A increases down the group, HA bond strength decreases and the acid strength increases there. For example, if I take the case of HF, HCl, HBr, HI down the group, as the size is increasing, acidic strength increases and HA bond strength decreases there. Similar is the case H2S is stronger acid in comparison to that of H2O. And the second factor is your polarity. When we discuss elements in the same row of the periodic table, HA bond polarity becomes the deciding factor for determining the acidic strength. As the electronegativity of A increases, the strength of the acid also increases. For example, if you take the case of methane, NH3, H2O and HF, here, the bond polarity becomes the deciding factor. And here, since the electronegativity of A increases, the strength of the acid also increases. So HF is your stronger acid in comparison to that of methane. Electronegativity increases as in the, in the same row of the periodic table. And that's why your bond polarity is the deciding factor for determining the acidic strength. Hope you have understood. Thank you, children. And in the next class, we'll be dealing with that of your buffer solution, common ion effect, and that of solubility product constant in detail. Till then, 